What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jordan and we're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. Instead of working on either of these cars, we're gonna be working on my garage. So I got some really awesome, but very inexpensive lights that I'll be putting on the ceiling and I'm gonna take you through the whole process. So if you wanna see how that goes, stick around. So before we dive into the project, I want to go over the lights that I bought, where I got them, and what we, what came in the box. So I got these lights off Amazon. They're from a company called Barina. They're their T5 lights, they're LEDs, and they're 6500, and that's the range of color that the lights come in. So it'll be like a cool blue white light, so very modern. And I'm really actually pretty impressed with what came in the box. They give you quite a lot of useful pieces. It only costs about $45 for a pack of six lights. I got 12 and the reason why I'm, impre I'm impressed is because A, they're super cheap, but they also give you a bunch of stuff to work with once you get them. So you can use these to tie these together. So you can either put these one after another and make a really nice clean line, or you can do a variety of shapes and you can use these to tie them together. Then they give you some brackets to attach them to the ceiling, which are super, super simple. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but they also give you um, connectors to do them end to end. So you can do each one of these lights perfectly end to end and just have a really nice consistent light. They also gave you a bunch of switches. So if you got six lights, you got six switches. And so I'm really impressed with that just because it's a lot of extra hardware that not everyone is gonna utilize, but someone will. And so the fact that they just get, go ahead and give you that stuff right off the bat, I think is really impressive. And then they also give you some connections or some wires that are pre-cut and pre-spliced. That way you can just wire them right into the ceiling. So the fact that they considered all of the different customers that might buy this, I think is pretty impressive. And I got some additional items from the store. That way we can try and make this install as clean as possible. So I went and got a bunch of extra wire. That way we can run the wire directly from the socket in the ceiling over to the edge of the design. Uh, Cause if you don't do that, you're gonna be limited to where the design of the lights start. So um, I wanted to have my own design, which we're gonna go through in a little bit. I also got this little cover that's supposed to cover the socket in the ceiling because otherwise you're just going to have an open hole in your ceiling with wires running out and I didn't want that. And I also got some wire management with this is basically just a cover for the wires running across the ceiling. And that way when you put the wires above on the ceiling, um, you use this little plastic thing to cover that up and make it look nice. And lastly, I got some mounting tape because I don't really trust the little screws and mounting brackets they give you in this kit um, because there isn't drywall anchors small enough for these screws. So you're pretty much just trusting these little screws to hold up the light, and I don't really like that. So I'm gonna pair it with the, the brackets with this on the lights on the, themselves. That way I can feel a little bit more confident that they're gonna stay up on the ceiling. So as you can see in the garage, we just have a single light bulb and it's just really dim in here. The camera does a good job of picking up the light, but there's no way that I can possibly work on the dots in and have any idea what I'm really looking at. So I'm really excited to get this garage just filled with light and this will be the first step in an awesome garage resto. Each kit comes with six lights and you need to be really thoughtful about how many kits you buy and how much you really need. Because six lights is probably gonna be plenty fine to light up a two car garage, but I wanted to do a specific design on the ceiling and I'm hoping that with 12, yeah, it's gonna be super bright, but we're gonna have so much light and it's gonna look really, really clean. All right, so the first part of this project, the very first step is we need to go up on the ceiling, make the marks for all of the brackets. And then after we make marks for the brackets, put the brackets on the wall, put the lights on the wall, and the last step is gonna be wiring it all together. So let's get started on that first step. I got this cool laser thing uh, because I can't make straight lines worth anything. So I'm hoping this is gonna help me put the lights on nice and straight. All right, so now that we have the marks on either side of the driveway, we're gonna go ahead and put the brackets on the ceiling where the lights are gonna go. And the brackets are very, very simple. You check them out. It's just a little tiny thing. Put the screw through there and that's it. And it goes in the wall just like that. So uh, we're gonna do that for the lights just on the sides. And then the last bit of lights that we're gonna mount is straight across.
Now that we have the brackets on the side, um, we're going to start preparing the lights to be put in those brackets. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my mounting tape and I'm going to put a little square of that right here in the middle of the light just because, you know, over time, I don't know if I fully trust those little screws in those brackets to hold on to the drywall. And because I couldn't find anchors small enough for those screws, a little bit of mounting tape is just going to make me feel a little bit better. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Also, I totally recommend getting a laser. This thing has helped me out so much today because I am so bad at keeping things straight and uh, totally worth the $35. Now that we have all the brackets on, I want to start from the middle. That way we are as centered as possible. And I'm going to do the two middle ones first. Here's where the innermost of the right side is going to go. And here's where the innermost of the left side is going to go. So from here, here outward is going to be all lights. But because we have to wire them separately, we're going to have a little bit of a gap in the middle. This is coming together really, really nicely, and I am so excited for when it gets turned on. It's gonna be so sick. But we just have a couple more steps to go, some of the harder ones. Um, so what we have to do for the wiring next is you see these pigtails here. There's green, black, and white. And so basically, we just need to extend these wires to go all the way to that light bulb there. So it's not very far, but you know, it's five or six feet or so, and that's all that needs to be done. And then from there on forward, we should be able to have power. Remember earlier we talked about our wire management, so this is going to be our little channel that's going to go on the ceiling from the light switch all the way to the, our pigtails. So this actually ended up being the perfect length, which is really awesome. So looking up here, that's where our wires are going to run, and we can sneak it in that channel, that way it looks nice. So this is the wire that I bought at Lowe's. It's just your real simple lamp wire. So if you're looking for wire, look for lamp wire. That way it's gonna be nice and thin. Off camera, I braided these. That way they'd be easier to, to keep track of. But if you want to do them single strand, that's fine. But you can get some of these crimps here. All we have to do is just expose the copper underneath the insulation. And once you have the copper exposed, all we have to do is solder the corresponding colors together with the soldering iron. And soldering is really not that difficult. People get intimidated by it because it's basically like welding wires, but it's not that hard. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Is you get the corresponding colors together, and then you wanna kind of mush these wires together to a certain point where they kind of stick together a little bit just because they're intertwined. Then once they kind of stick together a little bit, this is your opportunity to get out soldering iron as well as your solder. And you wanna heat up this wire enough that the solder just melts right into the, the, the weave of the copper. So this stuff is really, really hot. You don't wanna breathe it in. It's really bad for you, bad chemicals, but this is basically what you do is you just melt this stuff right inside and then the wires stick together. And that's it. And that's gonna be a really good connection. That's not gonna go anywhere. So basically every time you solder, you need to wrap this up with electrical tape or shrinking heat insulation. That way uh, the wires will never touch each other. Fast forward a few minutes and I have soldered all the wires together. I wrapped each wire individually in electrical tape. That way all of the exposed copper is hidden and insulated in a way. And then I wrapped the harness together just to give it a little bit more um, you know, sturdiness. Once you have your, your plugs all wired up, you're just gonna take them up there put them on the lights and then run your wires all the way to the socket in the ceiling. And then after that, we're coming along to the final steps. All right, this is where it gets a little bit challenging because 
Now I need to go flip the breaker for the garage light so we don't shock ourselves. But at the same time, it's dark outside, so it'll be kind of hard to see after that. Let's see. Let's try kitchen lights. Oh, I think that did it. Oh yeah, so it's real dark. All right, we're gonna say thank you to my car for having some lights for us. So thank you, car. These are some long screws. Look at that. Now that we've got this disconnected, the first thing that we wanna do is double check that it is disconnected. So I have my multimeter here, turn it to AC, touch the live part of the ground and of the hot wire. All right, we're good. So there's no current flowing through that wire. And that means that we're safe. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the light bulb with its little socket here. There we go. Sometimes working on electrical things can be a little bit confusing because we have white, green, and black here, which is where we need to match everything up. But all you see is a white wire and a black wire. Basically the white wire is your neutral, black is gonna be your hot, and then usually on the inside of this plate here, you'll find a little screw that has a wire that's screwed down onto it. And so this is gonna be our ground. And so we're gonna to have to get the green wires and put them underneath that screw and tighten it down to get the ground. Once we do that, we can connect the whites to the white, the blacks to the black, and we should be okay to turn the power on. I did make this extremely long for just in case I needed extra. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim these and then I'm gonna work on connecting all of those together. All right, so just what we talked about a few minutes ago, I paired the blacks with the blacks, the whites with the whites, and I put the two grounds all the way in the back with a nice solid connection, they're not going anywhere. So before I button it up, let's go flip the breaker and see how it goes. Fingers crossed. Wow, I am so blown away with the results of these lights. This is just truly incredible. Look at this, it looks so good around the edge of the garage. And you know what's amazing is that it's not harsh. It's bright, like the lights are bright, but it doesn't hurt your eyes, it doesn't, it's not like overly bright. This was just the perfect amount of light for your garage and you guys definitely should do the same. Um, I'm gonna pull the, the cars in, we'll do a couple of night shots, get a little edit going, and then we'll wrap up the video. All right guys, and that wraps up the video. Thanks for watching. I know that the beginning of this video was a little bit dull and you know, with the yellow lighting and everything, it just wasn't quite as great. But now the video has ended great. And uh, like I said before, I got these lights on Amazon. They're the Brina T5 6500 LED light strips. And I definitely think they're a fantastic value for money. I paid $88 for the lights themselves. And I actually, I spent about $90 at Lowe's on the extras. So if you're thinking about getting some new garage lights, definitely check these out. And also, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be doing more DIY stuff like this. And I'm also have more plans for the garage as well as both of my cars here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. No way, you will when you find out you're on camera right now. What? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Going in the blue.